All right. In this video, I want to talk about that great city that rules over the kings of the world, the kings of the earth, and is the harlot. Now, something that we need to realize when we're reading the scriptures and we're reading prophecy is that whenever we have a depiction of a woman, it's in relation to either the Church of Israel or the Christian Church, where the church is referred to as Jesus' virgin bride and Israel as the wife of God. That's what you need as your foundation, right? Because Gentiles or unbelievers, infidels that have no connection to God, they're referred to as beasts. Like the Gentiles are referred to as dogs and pigs. And when we see the kingdoms of the Gentiles, they're referred to as beasts, such as a, a lion, a bear, a leopard, an indescribable beast, a dragon, right? they described by beasts, right? So when you're reading Revelation and you read about this city, this great city, and how this is a harlot, you need to realize that the only way this can be a harlot is if it's either Israel who's going against God, going after some other God, so committing adultery, or it's the Christian church doing this exact same thing, right? So that's your two options. Either this great city, this harlot, is Israel, or it's the Christian church. But we read in Revelation chapter 1 about how we as Christians have been washed in the blood of Jesus and made kings and priests on the God. And then in Revelations 2 and 3, we read about the church age described by seven churches. And the church of Philadelphia has a door opened. And since they kept his word, not denied his name, this church of brotherly love will be kept from the hour of temptation that's going to come upon the whole world. And in Revelation chapter 4, we read about that door open in heaven. And John, representing the body of the church, one body like Enoch, like Jesus, being caught up in the moment and twinkle of an eye, immediately he was in the spirit. We have the rapture. And then in the very next chapter, chapter 5, while they're still in heaven, before the seals are opened, the elders... Praise God for redeeming them from all the nations of the earth and making them kings and priests on the God. So we can see right there that the church is gone. It's gone at Revelation chapter 4. And when we get into Revelation chapter 6, the first seal is open. The church is not there anymore. The church is not mentioned at all. Pretty much for the rest of uh, revelation at least not for the time of Jacob's trouble for the great tribulation that's going on for the opening of the seals the blowing of the trumpets and the pouring out of the vials of wrath there's no mention of them but there's a mention of Jerusalem Israel 144,000 Jews so at this time we know that the harlot has to be Israel because Israel rejected Christ and said, we have no king but Caesar. Like we see here, this woman messing around with the king here, clothed in purple and scarlet. And that's exactly what Catholicism is, is a mixture of pagan Rome and Judaism. And then they put Christian names on it. And that's why they have a 
Jewish insult to Jesus built into the doctrine of Catholicism, where Moses, when he came down from the mount, and he saw that the people were worshipping a golden calf, what did he do? He melted down the, the golden calf, he ground it up, he mixed it with water, so that the people could eat and drink their God, literally eat and drink their God, so that they could realize that it is dung, it's fecal matter. That's what your God is. It's an insult to eat and drink your God physically because you turn it into shit. It's the same thing that happened to Jezebel, where she's thrown down, trampled underfoot, trampled under by a chariot, and then eaten by dogs so that she became fecal matter, dog shit, ultimate insult, right? So we see that built into the doctrine of Catholicism uh, with their Eucharist, saying it's literally the body and blood of Jesus that you are eating. Uh, it's a, it's an insult, all the way back to Moses. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, eventually, the the beast gets upset with the woman that we read in at the end of Revelation 17, and destroys her. And we can see that kind of going on in the time of Jesus. And when the church is gone, it's going to continue where it left off. Where Israel was, in a sense, riding the beast, where they used the beast to kill Jesus. The Jews and the Romans worked together to put Jesus to death, and then later on, the Christians. Then, in 70 AD, Rome finally gets sick of the harlot and destroys her. There's nothing new under the sun. What has been done will be done. History repeats itself. This same thing is going to happen again. That's why in Revelation it says, Come out of her, my people. God's people are the Jews. The Christians are already gone. And that's what Jesus talks about in Revelation 24. He says, When you see the abomination of a desolation standing where it ought not, get out of Dodge. Right? And then we read in Revelation 12 about a rapture event, and then the dragon goes after the woman. So he says, flee into the wilderness. And the woman goes on the wings of a great eagle to flee into the wilderness for three and a half years. Right? So those that are really God's sheep, they're going to flee. But you see, this harlot represents basically the governmental and religious leadership of Israel. And it's what we read about twice in Revelation, in chapters 2 and 3. Maybe it's just in chapter 2. No, I'm pretty sure it mentions in chapter 3 as well, about the synagogue of Satan, those who call themselves Jews but are not. And it's basically this harlot who basically runs the nation of Israel and the main religion of Judaism. And even people today are waking up to the control that the Zionist Jews have over the world. And it's being turned into anti-Semitism where people just start hating Jews in general. And that's what's building up and what we're getting ready to see is world war and the establishment of Israel and Jerusalem as the head of the nations where after World War One we have the Balfour Declaration declaring they're going to make Israel a state World War Two, they make Israel a state World War Three, 
Israel becomes head of the nations because at that first seal, the Antichrist comes out going to conquer, going out conquering and to conquer because he's pretending to be the Messiah to establish Israel as the head of the nations. So this city that rules over the kings of the earth is not yet set up. It's going to be Jerusalem. And that's where she mingles with the world. She rides the beast. And it's going to be a revived Roman Empire that's going to be reviving right now because of what's going on with the formation of BRICS, the fall of America, and the aggression of Russia is going to end up causing Europe to have a flip along with the Americas, to just go full-blown fascist. And at first, the woman's going to be riding that beast, but then the beast is going to turn on her, just like Germany, at first, when Hitler took over, wanted to just push out Israel, uh, the Jews, and was going to help them form their own nation. They just wanted them out. But then... It turned into, no, we're just going to take you out and slaughter him. So you see how uh, that same thing is going to happen again, but on a worldwide scale. So uh, with that being said, I want to look at the scriptures to back up this claim so that you can see this clearly. And then it should help you when you go through Revelation so that when you're reading through, you know who this harlot is. And then you can start to understand the beast that she's riding on. And then understand the second beast, the false prophet. Now, the false prophet, I think, has something to do with the Mahadi, has something to do with Islam. And it actually ends up supporting the first beast. The revived Roman Empire. And the woman's going to be riding upon that beast. And eventually things fall apart. So, let's, let's get into the first scripture here. In Leviticus chapter 18, at verse 23, it says, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Now that's exactly what's going on where she's riding the beast. She is in union with the beast. Right? This is confusion. She's mixing with the world. Just like Israel said, we had no king but Caesar. That's confusion. That's bestiality. And the Christian church did the same thing when they went along with the whole Constantine converting to Christianity nonsense. And then they ended up mingling with the kings of the earth. And they ought to have known what Jesus said about the prince of this world cometh, Satan. The one that tempted him to give him the kingdoms of the world and he rejected it. And even Paul says that Satan's the god of this world. That not to mingle with the governments. But they did. They committed adultery. Bestiality. It's confusion. Why do I bring that up? Well, that's the first mention of confusion in the scriptures. And it's this word, tabel. And it's from balal. Confusion, incest, perversion. Right? And it's actually derived from the, right here, the first mention of Babylon is this word, babel. And it is from Balal as well. Right? 
So we see the connection here between Babel and Babylon. Everybody knows means confusion because it comes from the Tower of Babel where the languages were confused. So uh, you can even see in the Hebrew that the words just have the first letter is all that's different. So I believe this is a Tet Bet Lamed. And here is Bet Bet Lamed. So it's just the first letter. Uh, and it, the reason why I'm showing that is because when we look at the woman riding the beast, this is confusion. So this great city, Babylon, you should think of confusion where it's mixing things that shouldn't be mixed together man and machine man and beast right things that ought not go together such as judaism and the pagan world christianity and heathenism no there's a separation from righteousness and unrighteousness from the believers from the unbelievers light from darkness truth from lies that you've got to make a separation, a distinction, not mingle the two, right? We're continuing here. In Isaiah 30, verse 3, it says, Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. So you see, again, trusting in Pharaoh in Egypt. We know of Pharaoh, again, is a reference with Antichrist, such as in the time of the Exodus with Moses, and it's your confusion, right? Your perversion, right? Something that ought not be mixing with the world again with the confusion where they're relying on the Gentiles. Uh, Jeremiah 3, verse 25 says. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. Our perversion, right? For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. So here, Jeremiah is writing about how he's admitting the truth about himself and his people. But a good chunk of Israel does not admit this, right? They stand bold in their confusion. Isaiah 24, I kind of left this whole thing up because it's kind of interesting what is being said here about the, what God's going to end up doing to the world. But I wanted to focus here, verse 10, it says, The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Now, this is talking about the world being judged. So you get a reference to Revelation here. So this city of confusion, you think is the city of Babylon mentioned in Revelation. The city of confusion. And even Babylon had a symbols outside on its gates of, of animals mixed, such as an uh, eagle mixed with a lion and such things like that. So right off the bat, it shows you confusion, right? And ultimately, I think what is being said in Revelation, what I'm about to show you, Babylon is a reference to Jerusalem. And I'll, I'll show you. And Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city. This is the first mention of the great city in Revelation. So what city is it talking about? It says, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So you see perversion, confusion. You see when they went after Egypt, like we read 
which one was it? No, it was this one here, right? You, you go to Egypt, it's confusion. Sodom. Oh, yeah, sodomy, confusion, right? That's a perversion, right? So spiritually, it's called Sodom in Egypt, where also the Lord was crucified. So you see, these two witnesses are preaching in Jerusalem, that great city. And it's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So you see, it's telling you right off the bat, city of confusion. But it's Jerusalem. That's where Jesus was crucified. Right? And the reason why the two witnesses are preaching there is because the Antichrist is building up Jerusalem as the capital of the world. He's getting people to think that he is the Messiah. And he even has this Mahadi figure, this false prophet, getting Islam to support him. He had all these things set up. And in Revelation 14, verse 8, it says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So you see here how Israel... She's going to end up being head of the nation. She's going to rule over the world. She's going to mix her doctrine. Wine can be a reference to doctrines, teachings in the scriptures. And she's going to mingle her teachings with that of the world. And it's Babylon. It's confusion. Right? So the whole world's going to be mixed with this. And I was recently listening to a fellow talk about, who usually talks about uh, NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. And he's talking about the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, and how they uh, have been sued plenty of times for defamation of character. And that how Elon Musk is suing them for defamation of character, calling him an anti-Semite and ruining investing in his... Uh, Twitter, uh, mainly because he believes in free speech, even though he has banned anti-Semites from uh, his his site there, his app. Uh, and he was talking about how there was a lady who would just post like minute, two minute videos from TikTok showing the the left and their absurdity with uh, homosexuality and transgenderism in going after the children and didn't say anything about religion or Jews but the anti-defamation league was going after them after her about being anti-semitic with her stuff so he's saying hey aren't the ain't the ADL kind of saying something about their connection to this transgender thing so you can see how there's Jews who are not and they're getting the nations to drink of the wrath of her fornication, the Babylon, the confusion. I don't know if I'm really a man or if I'm a woman or if I should be going after the same sex, the opposite sex. Or, right? It, it's, it's confusion. I'm really a cat. You need to treat me like a dog. My pronouns are banana and Taco Bell. Right? It's... His confusion, right? No doubt about it. Right? And all the nations are drinking of that, except for the East, Russia, China. A lot of these other nations are like, no. And the anti defamation league doesn't really have any say there. They don't care about the Jews crying about anti uh, defamation or anti Semitism. So they're standing up. And since they're standing up, they're being made to look like the bad guys, right? Because they don't want to go along with this fornication here, this confusion. So they're looked at as evil, just like they're doing to us as Christians over here. You speak out against this stuff, you're just a hateful bigot. And it's like, how do you figure? I don't think you should be teaching sexual things to children. And I'm, there's something wrong with me? That's strange. So you see this setup to go against them. 
and uh, it's going to bring to a world war. But ultimately, uh, the Jews are going to get more control. And all the nations are going to be drinking from this, whether they want to or not. I think ultimately that's what's one of the things that's going to get them to go against Israel. But they're going to go after the Zionist Jews and all others who aren't, don't want anything to do with this nonsense. Because there's a lot of Jews who speak out against Zionism. They speak out against all the stuff that these Jews are doing because they're creating anti-Semitism. But they're going to be victims because of this. They're going to be targeted just because they're Jews. And that's not what ought to be done. Just like we know that with uh, white people, that there's a mix, right? Some of the leadership, obviously, are selfish evil, tyrannical douchebags. But that doesn't mean every white person is evil, which is pretty much what the media wants to make it seem, even though a lot of the media is a bunch of white people telling you that, right? So it's like, hey, if all white people are evil, why are you listening to these white people say that? That's just weird. But uh, anyway, it's just like uh, stereotyping, oh, all black people are gangbangers or something, right? No, there's groups that are, and then there's groups that aren't. You can't generalize like that. That's where it becomes obviously racist, right? But, uh, yeah, people are going to do that same thing to Jews. They're just going to lump them together. Because it's going to be like, oh, the only way we can get rid of all the bad ones is just to kill them all kind of thing, right? And that's where God has to step in, is to protect his people. You see, Satan is clever. He knows that, hey, God's people are the Jews. You know what? I'll mingle with the Jews, and I'll use the Jews to do things, because if anybody comes after me, God's going to step in, because he's going to protect his people. So I can get away with doing a lot of evil things using the Jews, because they're God's people. Just like he took the Catholic Church and he used Christians to do a lot of things. Because you know, if there's true Christians there, God's going to protect them. Just like he wouldn't destroy Sodom if there was ten righteous people there. And there wasn't even ten righteous people, but he wasn't going to destroy them until he took Lot and his family out. He would Lot, his wife, his two daughters, and their husbands. So it was six people. He wasn't going to destroy Sodom. He was going to take them out. And ultimately, it was only four of them because the two uh, husbands of his daughters didn't go. So just for four of them. And his wife turned back. So it was just three. God wasn't going to destroy the city for three of them. And then the two daughters were questionable there. But God took the three of them out of there. and. Then he destroyed the city. So Satan knows how God works. He has to keep God's people with him so that he won't get destroyed. That's why uh, we can read, as I brought up in other videos, but I think even a recent one I put up about are there people in hell right now? I briefly went over how paradise, Eden, used to be in the lower parts of the earth, what we would call hell. And the flames of hell were down there as well, separated by a great gulf being the bottomless pit. That was the prison of Satan. He had God's people there too. And that was kind of like hostages. Hey, if you destroy me, you're going to destroy them. But then Jesus set them free. And then he's going to come rapture us. But he wants to try to prevent that. Because he knows once we're gone, it's going to be like Sodom. Okay, judgment comes. Because he knows right now he can get away with doing a whole lot of crazy things. Sick and twisted things. Because God's not going to destroy the earth while we are here. But enough is going to be enough. And he's going to take us. And then it's like, okay, 
you don't have hostages anymore. What do you think the military or the police are going to do to some sadistic people when they don't have hostages? When they did some horrible things to the hostages and to others? They're just going to go all out on them. Right? So you need to realize that why some of these people get away with what they're doing is because that basically they got spiritual hostages. They're hiding among God's people because they know God's just not going to shoot wildly into the crowd to get him and end up killing his own people, metaphorically speaking. But getting back on track here, Revelation 16, it says in verse 19, and that great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the wrath of the fierceness of his wrath. So we see here that this last vial of wrath poured out. There's a connection to what's going to happen to Israel. Israel's the great city. I know it says Babylon, but I believe that great city is going to be referred to as Babylon. At least spiritually speaking by God, Israel, Jerusalem, is going to be called Babylon here on earth. And it's going to be broken up into three parts. This is not the ultimate destruction of Babylon because the people go after the people of the world go after Israel. And that's what happens when Jesus comes back. He ends up destroying those people. But it goes on to say in Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came out, I'm sorry. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So you notice that this whore is called great, right? And then I had verse 5 here. It says, Upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery. So you see how this is a mystery. It's not talking about Babylon in modern day Iraq. This is a mystery. Babylon the Great. You see how it's again a reference to the city here being great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Abominations is again connection to confusion. Confusion is a perversion, incest. Uh, other ones talk about it being a abomination. Right? Abomination to lie with a beast, for man to be with man. I think it even mentions that right here. Uh, it says, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination so verse 22 so we get an idea of what's going on here mother of harlots and abominations of the earth so the abominations would be sexual perversion for the most part man with man woman with woman mankind with animal kind mankind with technology abominations confusion Right? And yes, Israel is the mother of that. I know a lot of people would say, oh, the Catholic Church, and I completely understand. But you got to understand that Israel, Judaism, Judaism is the mother of Catholicism. And that's why Catholicism also played the whore. And then a bunch of the Protestants come out of Catholicism, and they all become harlots mixing with the state, all becoming 501c3 organizations, bringing them back into connection with Rome. Right? And we can read the whole chapter, of course, but I wanted to focus on key points. And it says here, um, where should I start? 
She's riding the beast, but at verse 16 on, it says something interesting here. It says, The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, ye shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is what we read about in the Old Testament, about Jews basically being cannibalized at the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to be eaten alive. Well, I, I don't want to necessarily say alive, but they're going to be eaten. Right? That's what's going to go on. We saw something similar to that happen in 70 AD, where they had to end up eating their own children. Right? A lot of horrible things going on at that time. There's nothing new under the sun. History just repeats itself. As it goes on to say, For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the beast here ultimately is a spiritual entity. And that's why it says these ten horns. That's the physical representation. The ten horns are ten kings that you actually see. But they all give their power over to this spiritual entity, allowing it to come into the world and do its will. And then it just goes after the woman to destroy her. And it says, And that woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Right? So this is not something that we actually see right now, this great city ruling over the kings of the earth. This is going to be set up later. This is going to be Jerusalem. It's going to be head of the new world order, the new the revived Roman Empire, the new United Nations, right? Whatever you want to call it, League of Nations. It's going to be the head. And uh, I imagine this is in reference to Revelation 11 and 12 and 13, where the, the beast has a deadly wound, and then it's healed. I imagine it has something to do with the Antichrist being killed and then filled with the spirit of Satan himself. And that's when he goes to try to destroy Israel, the Hebrews, the Jews. It's kind of like he knows that he's lost. Jesus is coming. He has a short time. I got to kill all the hostages. Because he's just coming. And so I'm just going to kill everybody. So there's nobody here for him to come save. Right? Uh, kind of a last ditch effort. Thinking like, well, if there are none of them here, then he has no right to come here. Right? It seems to be his logic. Revelation 19. Verse 2, it says, For, for true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. This reminds me of what Jesus had to say about the Pharisees. You know, they are of their father, the devil, who was a murderer and a liar from the beginning. And how they are guilty of the righteous blood of Abel all the way up into the last person that they put to death was John the Baptist's father, that they stoned him outside of the temple. So he was saying that they are guilty of all that blood. So you see it's in a reference to Jerusalem, Israel, the Jews, at least these Zionist Jews. Keep in mind, Jesus is a Jew. The apostles, Jews. The first Christians, basically all Jews. It wasn't until later on that they ended up spreading the gospel to the Gentiles, to the rest of us, right? So there's no reason to be anti-Semitic. Just because there's a, a Jewish peckerhead doesn't mean all Jews are some evil, right? It just means this peckerhead happens to be a Jew, right? So uh, I shouldn't have to tell you that, but there's some people... That they get caught up in this. There's something spiritual when it comes to the Jews that people get caught up in hatred towards them and wanting to just annihilate them. So you got to be very careful because you could, people can understand this about 
white people and black people and Asians and Latinos. But then when you say it about the Jews, all of a sudden it's something different. There's something spiritual that comes up where they're just like, all Jews must die. And they just become demonic. It's crazy. So you gotta you gotta watch out for that. You don't wanna be like that. But I wouldn't be surprised if this video gets flagged for just talking like this, but we'll see. And then to wrap this up, Revelation 21, verse 10, it says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city. So again, we get connection to what is the great city? The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. So ultimately, the great city is Jerusalem. And of course, this is heavenly Jerusalem that's going to be coming down to be placed on the earth, right? So when we read about the great city in the rest of Revelation, we know that that has to do with the physical representation of that great city, which would be Jerusalem. Just like when it talks about, oh, the heavenly temple, well, then you can know that there's a, in reference to something going on in the earthly temple. Right? So, uh, uh, another connection to that would be is uh, how Christians make up the temple of God. So when you have the temple in heaven, you know that we're up there because we make up the temple. So we know that we have been brought up and the temple in heaven has been rebuilt using us as the stones that need to fill in the replacements. And that uh, on earth at that same time, the third temple will be being built in Jerusalem. So whatever's going on spiritually is going to be going on physically in this world. So uh, with that being said, I hope this gave a lot of detail, a lot of thoughts on this. Uh, not just for you to study and to think about, but also for the people who are going to be left behind because they're going to need to know this information so they don't get confused because there's a lot of people, matter of fact, most Christians talk about this harlot being Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church, and I get why. It makes a lot of sense from our point of view. But they would not be considered a harlot because they were, they're not God's people in the time of Jacob's trouble. And some people think that it's America. And I can get that to an extent because we're the ones preaching this abomination, this confusion, really pushing all this nonsense. And it's, we seem to be the headquarters of that and the headquarters of a lot of missing children who they're probably using for adrenal chrome and other perverse things. So I can see why you would think America, but you got to think what is riding America. America would be more of a, a head of the beast than it would be the woman. Right? The woman's riding the beast, riding the government, riding the kingdom, or in this case, the kingdoms as their seven heads. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. Think about these things, pray about these things, read about these things, and take care. All right, here's the three verses that I like to put in all the videos here. Isaiah 34, 16, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read so that Jesus doesn't tell you what he tells the Sadducees here in Matthew 22, 29. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures. It's not that you are in error because you don't know the the one true church that happens to be your denomination or that you don't know your, the, the fundamental beliefs or the 
Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, or whatever creed, or that you don't know the magisterium or the clergy, or you don't know your favorite pastor or priest, that's why you're in error. No, you're in error because you don't know the scriptures. You need the scriptures to test to see whether or not those are correct, whether those are the right traditions, whether those are legitimate clergy, whether that church is actually following God, and whether those creeds line up. Those fundamental beliefs are found in the scriptures because knowing the scriptures is knowing God. Like we read here in John 17, 3, Jesus says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is a deep knowing. As Adam knew Eve and she conceived, you need to know God in like manner so that you may be born again, that his word, his seed, it abides in your heart. Will you truly believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, that he died in your place and gives you his life in exchange so that your righteousness, your good and your bad, your life, past, present, and future, died 2,000 years ago. Your life is his. He can do what he wants with it. He puts it to death, and he gives you his life in exchange, his perfect, eternal life. That's the deep knowing you need to know of God. So, there you go. Do you know him? Do you want to know him? You get to know him. Thanks again for watching. Take care. So that fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? So that fella didn't take the sacraments, didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary, didn't take the rosary. Didn't tie, didn't tie. He went to heaven, he went to hell. You say? Didn't keep the law, he didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments, he broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule, he didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory, he woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. Just like that. <laughs> you have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that. <laughs>